Hi everyone, welcome back to the Monterey Road Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Kajawa. We're in Crystal Lake, Illinois on the Atlantic Great Western. I'm going to show you a little technique here to save a little bit of money on your scenery. I hear a train coming, so let's watch this train go by and then uh, show you this quick technique that I have. This train is a Milwaukee to Chicago through freight. Here's the industry that spurred on this video. This is Wayne Feeds and Allied Mills in Crystal Lake, Illinois. They take in byproducts from quite a few different companies. Uh, one of them is Miller Brewing. They take in the spent grain after they make the beer. Another one is Great Western Malting. They take in tank cars of the excess liquid. It contains a lot of proteins and other things and they kind of distill that down and spray it on the uh, food that they make for the animals. So I have a nice setting here for inbound products, but I didn't have an outbound product place. So this area over here against the wall kind of languished with this uh, Montgomery feed and seed. I never sent cars here and I never, it just languished here. So my idea was to take up the scenery and build a shipping place for the Wayne Feeds. And I thought, maybe I can salvage some of this scenery. So let me show you what happened. All you need for this technique is a tray to put your scenery in and a putty knife. It can be metal or plastic, it doesn't make any difference. get rid of the building and just some firm pressure will pop this stuff up you can almost get down to the bare base whatever you're using I like the homo soap board if you haven't tried it, I'd look into it. It's really good for spikes, holding spikes and holding scenery. And it's a sound deadener. Now another thing you can do when you get done is clean out your vacuum and go through here and pick up the rest of this. And if you clean it out, you can save even more scenery. Because you can see I'm getting some on the track and that. Now a big piece came up there.
So let me get my vacuum out. I'll clean this off and show you what's going to go in here. So here's the Wayne Feeds shipping building. It ships out dog food, cat food, monkey chow, whatever they're making that day into 60-foot uh, box cars that travel all over the country. That's a new line kit. I don't even know if they're in business anymore, but I cut it in half uh, lengthwise. And uh, I, so I still have the other half to use somewhere else. So that's what's going to occupy that. You can see I still got a lot to do. I got to fix the foundation and put some ballast in and some weeds and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to enjoy this a lot more than that abandoned, kind of a semi-abandoned siding that, that Montgomery feed was sitting in. So let me show you what I generated from that uh, scraping up that scenery. So you can see how much I generated just in that one spot. That's probably close to half, three quarters of one of those big jars of scenery. That's probably eight to 12 bucks worth of scenery right there that probably would have gotten thrown away. So scrape up your scenery. I'll show you the next step. This is scenery that I've scraped up and you notice how clumpy it is. Or if you buy some scenery at the show and your clumpy foliage is just a little bit too clumpy, get yourself an old, I got an oyster food processor. If you take it out of the kitchen, don't tell your wife where it went and don't do this when she's around because it is noisy. I have my hearing protection here I'll put in. I'll uh, th throw some of it in there. Sometimes it helps to tilt the, the uh, apparatus so that you can get the cyclone working in there and chop up this stuff. And don't throw a whole lot in at a time. A little bit goes a long way to get the uh, chopping action. So uh, let me get my ear protection in and I'll show you how this works. I can't even hear myself right now. I got about two handfuls of stuff in there. I'm gonna turn it on full and I'm gonna tilt it a little bit to get the cyclone action going. See that turned it into a pretty good powder. Nice, nice ground foam. I'll throw another couple handfuls in. doesn't take much to get that turned back into usable ground foam and when you've gone out and bought the ground foam uh, you can realize how big a uh, difference that can make in saving you money. So here's quite a bit you can see in here that I've recycled. That's probably 20 bucks maybe two of those big canisters or a canister and a half. But this will make great background ground foam. It's uh, taking it all apart. Now you don't want to do this all at once so it's all uniform. So maybe do a batch and then throw a couple other colors in there. And then uh, you'll have a nice variety as you scatter it around your layout. So you can check out, uh, check out one of these food processors. Either you got one in your closet upstairs that you're not using, or you go down to the 
uh, secondhand store, pick one up, save you a lot of money. I think this cost me five bucks at a garage sale. Here we are at Lac Lavelle, Wisconsin. This is an AGW coal train, just been delivered. This whole yard has all been done with the recycled material that I ground up in a food processor. I've added a little bit of ballast here and there, but I wanted this yard here to look like it was overgrown and not used very well, not maintained. And I'll show you why here in just a second. As you can see, I still have a little work to do. Got a new bridge I'm going to put in here. You put this recycled scenery material down just like you would anything else. You can scrape it up like I did, or you can put it in a clean out your vacuum and vacuum it up and then reuse it right out of the vacuum. It makes great background scenery. It also makes great foreground scenery if you want to put other things over it. Uh, if you're going to put a, like a bunch of trees in like I will here, you won't notice that it's been recycled and kind of mixed up with some ballast. To show you how this scenery looks in action, this is my Wisconsin Short Line Railroad, which took over a small uh, semi-abandoned branch line. And the farmers that bought it have turned it into uh, quite a little operation here been a nice change of pace from my Lantern Great Western. It's an all Alco short line. It serves a co-op grain elevator and also a sand plant serving the petroleum industry. Little did we know that the sand would explode upon the scene and Wisconsin Short Line got quite a boost in revenue. They've had to lease some power, pick up some power, That's their paint scheme, the first one. And then there's quite a few patched locomotives, but slowly they may get around to painting some more. My Atlanta Great Western helps finance this little short line because we do get some interchange work from them. Here we are at Zonia, Wisconsin, where the sand plant is. They cut off their train and they're getting ready to pull the loads out of here. They'll assemble them there back at Lac LaBelle and then they'll spot the empties in the sand plant. Would you even noticed this was recycled material? My friends haven't said anything, so I assume they either don't know or they don't care. Well, thanks again for watching my videos. Uh, check out my other videos at the Model Railroad Back Shop. 
My Atlantic uh, Great Western is also on YouTube and it's on Facebook. I was thinking about starting a page just for the Wisconsin Short Line, but I might just keep it with my Atlantic Great Western. I don't know. I got three pages now, so that's about enough I can handle. So thanks again for watching my videos. Uh, check out the other ones and uh, say hi to me on Facebook.